Hey you guys, it is me, Laura, and today I am going to share with you a little bit about the science curriculum that we have chosen to use this year. Um, I, it's a little bit more than just like an unboxing or an explanation because we have actually used this program some already, quite a bit um, in some ways, and it's a really good fit for our family. And we are using this year um, Real Science for Kids, and we are doing the Building Blocks program, level one. Um, I know there's a lot of questions about the difference between the Building Blocks program and the Focus On program, and I will share with you a little bit of that here as well. So let me flip this around and show you what we've got. All right, so these books are a little bit older. They're older editions, and this is before they had the two programs of the um, Focus On and the Building Blocks program. And just, I forgot to mention, this is what we're using for our first grade. We're doing level one for first grade, and I also include my four-year-old with that. It's really, really adaptable if you have multiple ages working together, which is part of why this program is so great. But um, originally, they just had all the sciences broken up. I also have the physics book, but um, I'm letting someone borrow it. And there's also an astronomy book and an earth science book, and I think that that is all of them. So one thing that you'll notice with these books is if you look at them, there are a lot of pictures. The sections are broken up, so they're not very long. So you can do one a day. You can break it up in a ton of different ways to make it a lot easier. And so this is the basic text. And this is how the texts are gonna look in the Focus On series. The difference between the Focus On and the Building Blocks is that with the Focus On, um, they're not full, it's not a full year program, but you'll take all of this level one um, they level them a little, they call the levels different now, but you'll take all of one level of biology and do that all at once, all of your biology um, at that level. And then you'll pick another like chemistry and you'll do all of your chemistry at that level at one time. Um, and then your physics or your earth science or your astronomy. And the difference is that, um, and it'll have the same experiments, the same information as the building block series. The difference is that if you take the building block series, so what it does is it will take the first one, two, three, four, four chapters of chemistry, and you'll do that in this year, and you'll do the first four chapters of biology, and the first four chapters of physics, and the first four chapters of geology, and the first four chapters of astronomy. And then the next year, you'll go on to the next four chapters. But it's the same information that is covered in the Focus On books. So a lot of it just depends on how you want to do it. We like the Building Block series because we do a big unit. So we'll do a big chemistry unit. But honestly, we don't have the wherewithal. We get kind of burnt out to do an entire chemistry at the same time. So that way it kind of breaks it down. So we'll do a big chemistry unit and do those four chap four lessons and then we'll do a biology unit and then we'll do, um, you know, go through all the different sciences. And that works really well for us. Focus on would work really well if you do like, we don't do like complete unit studies um, in the sense of like it's all encompassing in all our subjects, but you could easily do that with the focus on series. And so that is really nice. And um, the focus on, either of them can really be adapted to having multiple children in um, with you at the same time. So it just depends on your preferences. Like, do you want to cover in one year, if you have a child who's super interested in, say, chemistry, or super interested in physics, or super interested in biology, the Focus On series might make more sense. But if you think that it's just kind of an interest that will fade, then the um, building blocks might make sense too. And the great thing, even with the building blocks, is that um, even though it goes like chemistry, biology, physics, whatever, we actually don't necessarily do that order. For example, we always do astronomy when our days are short because the boys can, they don't have to stay up until 10 o'clock at night to see the stars, um, for example. And we always try and do biology um, during the spring or the fall because the weather is nicer. And so it's easier for us to go outside and actually observe those things. A lot of times I will try and do chemistry too um, when the weather's not quite as nice because there's a lot of really fun um, experiments that we can do with that. And then on the flip side, sometimes it's nice to do those experiments outside. So it just depends. You can totally move that 
around. So that's a little bit of the difference between the focus on and the building blocks. If you have any questions, let me know. But I've kind of done this a little bit out of order because I haven't explained to you a whole lot about what what it is and why we picked it. So now that I've explained the differences, I'm actually going to set these books aside. That would be more of the focus on, and I'm just going to focus on the building block series. So like I said before, there are five different branches of science, basically. There's chemistry, there's biology, there's geology, physics, and astronomy. And so the whole idea of building blocks of science is that it gives you the foundations to truly understand these sciences. And I feel like a lot of times we're kind of taught science a little bit piecemeal and it doesn't make sense. And a lot of that is because we really don't have the foundation that we need to understand what's going on. And even me reading these books and doing this stuff with my kids, I have learned so much about chemistry. It's not so scary to me anymore. It makes a lot more sense. Same with physics. Those are two branches of science that I really struggled with in school. And um, had I known some of this stuff, I, I love science now. And I've actually even thought of going back to school and getting a degree um, in some scientific field, probably biology, but I don't know. Um, but it has really just kind of opened my eyes to how fun and exciting science can be. So when you open it up, you have your table of contents and each, um, each field or each um, branch of science, you're going to learn similar things. Like you're going to learn the history and modern and everyday chemistry, biology, and um, geology. You're going to learn those things and it's just kind of similar patterns and then the next year you're going to build on that and learn even more and keep building on top of what you have already learned. So that's kind of the way that goes and then you look. I love the way these are written out because I used to teach study skills in um, college actually. I taught, it was a class that was not for credit but it was a class that um, students who were struggling or had a GPA that was below a specific level they were required to take this class to teach them how to study. And this textbook is set up perfect um, to really help kids learn study skills because you can go through the first chapter with them, even little kids, and read what you're going to be reading about, talk about history of science. What do you think that means? What do you think the history is? This is the very first all about science, um, which you do have. But let me go ahead to the next. But you can talk about, okay, well, chapter two, what is chemistry? Um, what's the history of chemistry? What is modern chemistry? Like, what do these things mean? What, what might we be talking about? And then you can go through and read. And the thing is, is, this is written in such an engaging way. It is not boring. It is not, it, you feel like you're talking to someone. It's very narrative. Some people don't like that about it, but I think it's really good. Um, like here you have a long time ago, students didn't study chemistry in school. Today, chemistry is an important part of all science and students all over the globe study chemistry. But where do we get it? Where do we get chemistry? Without knowing about chemistry, ancient people still did a lot of chemistry. Ancient people used chemical processes every day. And it does explain them a little bit, but it's, it's very short, very easy to understand. Lots of really fun and engaging pictures that my kids really like a lot. And I love how it talks about chemistry in every day. And then um, at the end, you have a summary and you know that these are the important things that your child needs to know, needs to pick up on. And obviously based on late, um, grade level will depend on how thoroughly they know and understand this, but it's very simple and very easy. And so when you're done reading, you can go back and just talk about these things and make sure that your child understands them. And so that is it for the chapters. Now some people just use the textbook and that is it. Um, and that would be plenty and it's so easy to add books from your library that go along with the chapter. I also will add little videos from YouTube. Um, I will actually link below to you guys. Now this is a working document. I'm actively using it so I cannot give you any editing rights at all, but you're welcome to see it where I kind of do some loose lesson planning. So I'll pull together for each chapter. My children learn very well. My oldest is very visual, so a little video will help him a lot. So we'll watch a video to help reinforce what we're learning. Um, and sometimes we'll read books about famous scientists or people like that. Sometimes we will um, just read trade books. Sometimes I'll say, okay, let's pick out a book um, about, um, 
a book on our shelf about some kind of biology. So then they come and find, and okay, what is life? What is something living? What book might be about biology? And so just learning about things in that way. So some people just use that and that is it. But one of my, and a big question here, is this science, is this, I mean, is this um, Christian background? Is it um, evolution background? Is it any, this series I would say is non religious in any way like it's not it doesn't talk about evolution it doesn't talk about creation it does not talk about how the world began or the history it talks about science which is things that it talks about things that we can measure things that we can see what is science so it really can you can totally make it christian you can omit the christ like there's not christianity that you have to omit otherwise so it's a very neutral neutral program um, this, um, this is the laboratory notebook and the teacher's manual. If you're doing, if you are doing experiments and labs, you must have both because the teacher's manual has all the materials that you need, some extra notes to explain the experiments and everything. But if you're just doing the textbook and you're not doing all the experiments that go with it, I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't need the teacher's manual. You don't need either. These two kind of go together. The um, laboratory notebook and the teacher's manual, those two. Um, I use this. I love the experiments in this program. This is another reason that I have chosen this program. We actually don't write in the laboratory notebook. Um, my kids have a separate notebook that they write in and put everything in and that's awesome because we won't have to repurchase anything from this program. Uh, once we have it, I can reuse it. Probably won't reuse it again until I get to my third child because my first and second will um, will be doing all this together. But I love this because it is very much about teaching the scientific method, which is, uh, you know, making an observation, making a hypothesis, testing it, seeing what happens. These experiments are extremely open-ended, but they still teach a point and a purpose, which I love. A lot of a lot of books, a lot of science curriculums have science activities, which are really fun, but you're following very specific directions to achieve a very specific outcome to teach you about a scientific principle. And there is a place for that. But I feel like we don't learn about the scientific method. And that, for children, is so fascinating. It's how their brain works. So usually you come here, and like for this one, this is going to be the next one we do, they have a few questions that make you think, a few things to think about, that make you ponder, that make you wonder. But there's no right answer. You're just answering questions. And then they give you something to observe or something to experiment with. Again, there's not a specific outcome that we're looking for here. We're just exploring. So here they're supposed to try and figure out, well, what makes something living and what makes something non-living? So they get a living thing and a non-living thing and write and observe. And there's no specific answers that we're looking for at this point. We're learning how to explore for ourselves because in science you don't, usually you're trying to explore things that haven't been explained. You're trying to explain it. So there's not a, a, a you're coming up with the outcome and so that's what's what's happening here and then um you write about what you discovered and what you found out in your experiment and then they usually have an explanation to help you understand things a little bit better and they also have a section that's usually just for fun um so in this point at this place you're imagining traveling to a faraway planet and think about the kinds of living things you might discover. So you can make up your own living things and you're, you're writing a story recording what you saw on the next page. So you can see here, these are very, very open-ended. You can totally adapt them. Like we don't write down most of these answers just because my, my oldest is in first grade and he doesn't like writing much at this point, which is fine. And um, my youngest is only four. So at this point, we've got a baby on the way. But um, so we just talk about these things. We don't write them down. We talk about them and that's fine. And then I might have them write this in their other journal, like draw a picture of the living things and the non-living things. And we can talk about it. I can help them write too. That's fine. But it's just so flexible. And I think you can see too how it would be very easy to do this with multiple ages at the same time um, because they're so, so diverse. So um 
that kind of gives you a little picture of, of what these are like. And then just to show you, this is what the teacher's notebook is. So some experiments rely heavily on the teacher's notebook because there's more instructions and more step-by-step -step setup or things like that. But at the beginning, there will be a materials list of what you need to, to do the experiment. And then it walks through what you do for each of the steps um, and gives you the important, important information you need to know. And just kind of, I don't know, gives you a basic overview. So a lot of the stuff is not necessary for this project, for example. Really, I could probably do this one on my own without a teacher's guide. But sometimes you need more specific materials and this teacher's guide would be very important. And sometimes they give you very, a lot more specific instructions on how something is supposed to be done. And in that case, it's very important to have the teacher's manual. So I would not recommend having the lab notebook without the teacher's manual. But like I said, one of the awesome things about this is all of this stuff can be reused. So I never ever have to purchase any of this again. Now, if you don't, if you do want your kids to just write in the lab manual, that's fine. You can do that and then you can just purchase that again if you need it. Um, but that's that's kind of fun and then another thing that i wanted to show you that goes along with this is just the the k the level k activity book and this is good um i do use this with my four-year-old he likes to color um and he doesn't like to listen so much when i'm reading but my my six-year-old loves to just be right beside me while i'm reading from here and just to look at all the pictures and take it all in so oftentimes i will let my younger child pick a coloring page from here to do to color while i'm reading and so for example with what i was showing you um it's just very basic. So like, let's look at, I see I've shown you some chemistry stuff and I've shown you some, let's look here and see what we have. Okay, so here's some physics. So it's just very basic. How, how far can you throw a ball? Color the picture. Um, go outside and throw a ball as far as you can. Use your feet to measure how far you threw it. Place one foot in front of the other and count your steps as you walk, how many feet. And so this is just, I mean, you could use this as a standalone science curriculum for probably K through two, honestly. Um, and it just do one page a day. What goes up must come down. Go outside and throw a baseball up in the air. Does it come down? Draw what you discovered. And then you're rolling a blue ball and talking about if it's hard or easy and looking at all of these physics principles in a very easy way, but you're really laying the foundations. So for me, this works really well because I can find a few pages that go along with what we're reading. So like, for example, with biology, we're talking about, you know, what is life? So I can say, hey, you pick out one of these pages about what is life, what do you wanna do? And then you can do it. And some of these go directly, like this coloring page is exactly a picture that is in this book. So when we read and talk about it, you know, it makes it a whole lot, whole lot easier to kind of work, work together, so. So that is kind of an overview of uh, Real Science for Kids and the Building Blocks versus the Focus On program. I will also link, um, for sure, down below and up here if I haven't already, the video that I did just before they had the, the two different programs with the, just the, what would be the Focus On program now and show you a little bit more inside the books and what the books are like. But I feel like this program is really good. I like it because you can do just a little bit of science by going through the textbook and then making sure that you're reading and exploring other science things that your kids might be interested in, whether it be science kits or books or games or whatever, or even just reading the textbook, honestly, and going over that. Um, they do also have, if you like tests and quizzes or have to do them for your um, homeschooling requirements. They do have books where you can do that. They also have some online components and things like that as well. So be sure to check that out. This is just really the basic program that I have here. Um, but it's really, it's really flexible for a ton of ages. I love it because it takes the things that are really hard and it explains them in ways that are so easy to understand, like understanding atomic bonds, like that was difficult in high school, but the way she explains them in her books, Rebecca Keller, the author, it, it just totally, totally
totally makes tons of sense. It makes it easy. And she invented this program. She wrote this program as she was working with her kids because she realized, like, children can understand the hard concepts of science. Like, they're not that difficult. So why do we wait so late to introduce them to them? And why do we make them seem so complicated? And so her goal was to write something that children could really understand and get. And she watched how her kids would get it and understand it and apply it. And, and it was just, it made her very excited. So that's, that's where this program came from. If you have any questions, let me know. I feel like with this, I've used it for a while now, actually, and we've had so much fun with it, and I feel like I'm kind of all over the place explaining it to you, not, not as concise as usual. So if you do have any questions, please leave them below. If you've used this program and have enjoyed it or had any problems with it, leave the comments below too, because that can be helpful for other people. And yeah, I just hope that this was a helpful, helpful video for you. I love this program. I think we'll probably use it for a while, um, and it just works really well for us. So I hope that you guys have a good day, and I will talk to you later. Bye.